kind of give you the nightmare scenario is like, I'm a treatment coordinator. My favorite patient that comes in, you know, every six months, I know their family. I really like them and they needed a lot of work done at one point. And I submitted some kind of option for them to get financing and they were declined and it created this awkward working relationship. And now I only bring it up when someone begs me for it now. There's some deceptive financial metrics when people are like, hey, our approval rating is X. You have to ask more questions. Like, is that 100% of the treatment that's needed? Or is that just you throwing out random numbers, giving somebody a dollar when they need 100? Marketers have a worse reputation than probably anybody else. Like everybody hates marketers because we market, right? And you don't ever know if you're getting the real thing or the sugar-coated thing. And I mean, that's what people are dealing with. So I'm a dentist. How do I kind of protect myself from that? Welcome to another episode of Dental Marketing Theory. I'm your host, Gary Bird. I'm the founder of SMC National, where we help you create, convert, and close more new patients so you can grow the way that you want. But something that's going to hold you back from growing is going to be how you present financing, especially through your team, to your patients. And today I have Chad Johnston from iCreditWorks. He is the director of strategic accounts, and he's going to be sharing some information that I promise you is going to change how you see financing for your patients, especially around approval ratings. I'm going to share something with you. The approval ratings that you're getting from all these different companies, a lot of them is smoke and mirrors. And he's going to break down definitions for us on how you can actually compare apples to apples and actually know who's loaning money the most to your patients. So that way you can get the most yeses and get your team bought in, which is really, really important. You're not going to want to miss this one. All right. So Chad, why don't you tell me how you got into the dental industry? Sure. Um, so out of college, I actually worked for a bank for about two and a half years and I held three different roles there. Everything was exciting for about six months at a time. Uh, but ultimately I despised being stuck indoors uh, and being cooped up all day. So I'd, I'd look for opportunities to move into outside sales and talk to everybody that I knew uh, and ask them if they liked their job or not. And just happened to run across an old college roommate that was working at the time for Dent Supply, uh, which became Dent Supply Serona. There happened to be a restorative position open there and uh, everything just kind of fell into the place. Um, that was, um, I ended up being at Dent Supply Serona for about 15 years. I uh, started as a restorative rep, moved into a key accounts role, ended up leading teams across Texas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. And uh, then actually moved into our national accounts team, piloted our mid-market uh, segment as the DSO industry was really starting to grow and ramp up and uh, ended up selling CBCT and actually partnering with some of the largest dental organizations in the U.S. and uh, had a lot of fun there. Got to teach dentists how to do implant planning with our nerve mapping, mapping software, uh, endo planning, all that kind of stuff. Wow. Okay. So, and then how, how did you end up coming from there to iCreditWork? Like what, what was the jump there? Sure. So uh, something called COVID happened uh, towards kind of the end of my tenure there at Dents by Serona. And uh, I had actually the guy that hired me years and years ago into Dents by is now our chief growth officer at iCreditWorks. And when he made the uh, decision to uh, take his next step, uh, I was one of the early phone calls that he made and said, Chad, I've done a lot in the dental industry, worked a lot on the, you know, the vendor side, but I've never worked with DSOs and I want you to come help me out. Uh, so I put him off for about four or five months uh, and he was persistent and uh, moved into iCreditWorks just over a year ago. And so glad that I made that decision. We're able to help a lot of people at a very important time uh, in order to afford their dental care. Hey, I got a secret for you. Dental marketing agencies are dead. You got that right. Dental marketing agencies aren't performing the way that they used to because there's so much more complications to growing a dental office than just getting a marketing company. At SMC, we are passionate about being a growth partner and helping your practices grow the way that you want. And we have a free newsletter that goes out every single month at dentalmarketingdigest.com. If you sign up, it's free. And there's over a thousand practices that are already getting these free tips. You don't want to miss out. Sign up now. 
links below. How did, how did you know that that was the right play? Like, how did you know, okay, because that's a big jump. That's totally different than what you were doing. You were working directly with clinicians, teaching them how to level up. Now you're in this space where it's like, yeah, clinicians use it, but not really their team uses it, right? Like the financing side. So how did you, how did you kind of make that jump and know that it was the right jump for you? Yeah, you know, there were a couple of things that really gave me piece. Um, you know, I'd, I'd been at one organization for a very long time, a large organization, great organization, but I really wanted something different. And I wanted something that I could affect in an early way, in an impactful way. Um, and so it, that was kind of one of the unique things with iCreditWorks um, being newer uh, in, in the startup phase. Another huge thing that gave me peace was actually the guy that I'm working for. Uh, Chris Wright is our, our chief growth officer. And you know you always have an affinity for people that have hired you in the past, not only into the industry, but we just always had an incredible working relationship and uh, just immediate trust there. And, uh, you know, my wife was a part of that as well. Um, wow. She actually um, looked at me and, and, and said, you know, uh, Chris is actually my favorite boss that you've ever worked for. Uh, maybe you ought to, maybe you ought to talk. Why, to why did you she know, like, why was, she, why was she, why was he, your, her favorite uh, boss? Uh, I think she just knew that uh, we had a great working relationship uh, she had met his wife before, you know, we had a lot of success at Dense Fly. So she remembers, uh, you know, holiday dinners and kind of that team uh, atmosphere that we had years ago. That's a pretty big endorsement when your wife is like, hey, that's my favorite boss for you. That's um, that means it's not only working business wise, but it's also working because uh, you can be really, really successful and really stressed out. Right. And like have a really hard life. Right. And that, a lot of times that trickles yep. to home, but it's a, that's a pretty big yep. ringing endorsement. Um, I've never had anybody say that before, uh, like on, on the show, like in that fashion. So that's, that's pretty big. Yeah. It's happy wife, happy life. Uh, that is a, that is a big ringing, ringing endorsement for sure. Um, yeah, the, uh, the other thing that I would say, it was a very unique opportunity in that it allowed me to pull from my banking background that I'd left. I really never had an intention. Uh, to going back to, but now it combined kind of that expertise. And I did everything from consumer and small business lending to even investments. Um, like I had my series seven license, 66, um, merging that with the clinical and dental knowledge that I've gained over the past 15, 16 years, and then marrying this opportunity within the industry at a time that's so crucial for DSOs. You know, everybody's trying to grow. Unfortunately, we're in this inflationary environment where people need to borrow money in order to make good health decisions. Yeah. Um, and so it's just kind of a, a unique time to blend those those past plus the relationships that I have in the industry. And, you know, it's just been a lot of fun. At, at the end of the day, regardless of what company I'm working for, um, I want to help people. That's really where my heart is, where it's always been. And so I can do that by, you know, showing unbelievable images and CBCT to make sure that we place implants in the most proper manner or create restorations that aren't going to fail or now helping people afford their dental care. And sometimes people just kind of need a little nudge to make good decisions for themselves. And in my view, that's part of what we make it really easy to do for both dental teams and for patients, uh, is to be able to know their options, see their options quickly, and then help them make a good decision. That's awesome. And so why don't you walk us through a little bit of what what you're working on, what you're excited about um, at iCreditWorks now, now that you're, you've kind of got the background, you got the dental background, you understand the complexity of the industry as well as the, the technicians that work within it. And then now you've been doing, working with iCredit long enough to understand the obstacles that a lot of, uh, to be honest with you, just the finance world faces. There's there's the the main user of your product a lot of times doesn't believe in your product, not just iCreditWorks, but like any financial uh, company because they've been burnt. They've had, I'll kind of give you the, the nightmare sc yeah. scenarios. Like I'm a treatment coordinator. My favorite patient that comes in, you know, every six months, I know their family. I, I, I really like them and they needed a lot of work done at one point. And I submitted some kind of option for them to get financing and they were declined and it created this awkward working relationship. And now I only bring it up when 
someone begs me for it now. And so like walk sure. me through what, like how you guys see the landscape and how you're dealing with that and what problems you're solving. Yeah, no, I, you set the stage great. And, and we hear that kind of feedback um, all the time. In fact, it's, it's why we exist. And it's some of the largest problems that we're trying to solve are friction related. And it's friction for the patient, but it's also friction for the dental team um, that's there on board. So, you know, if, if I'm if I'm choosing a place to begin, right, it's it's got to be here. So 100 percent of the patient experience is on the privacy and the security of their own mobile device. Gary, do you have your own mobile device near you? Like, can you touch yeah. it right now? Okay, I don't think you're filming on it, but uh, you know we all carry around these things. Yeah, no. um, and so this yep. creates an opportunity where the dental team can actually engage the patient before they come in office. They can do it while the patient's in office, or if they recommended treatment and the patient didn't schedule and the patient goes home, too often that's a lost opportunity if we didn't get them scheduled. And often if they did not schedule, it's because they didn't think they could afford it. They didn't think they'd be able to see a path to say yes to that treatment. And with what we've created, they can connect with the patient as part of their recall efforts. All they do is they send a text to the patient. The text has a link to download our app. And once the patient does that, they open the app, some of their information's already there. And literally in seconds, they have a pre-approval decision up to $20,000. And then the very next screen, they're able to see what their options are if they already understand their treatment amount. So it's just this very consumer friendly option, right? That's very easy and private for the patient to use. I want to go back though. So like you said, eight, you know, eight or nine different things when you were kind of setting up this, this um, question, I think are just really important. I think we should spend more time with the pain that you talked about where you know a treatment coordinator and office manager has really avoided offering finance in the past because you hit on a several things rapid fire and I, I know you've uh, you've really dug into this right we're passionate about this so there are different friction points where financing has not been kind to the dental team in the past um, and and probably the number one thing is discussing patient financing is uncomfortable for the dental team. And there's a couple of reasons. I think you already hit on one of them. In the past, only about 40% of people have been approved. Um, there is an overwhelming segment of the patient population that has not had options. Um, so that's one of the reasons we approve all the way down to the low 500s on the FICO scale. But then we even go a step further and if patients don't have a credit score at all, so if you think of uh, patients that are new to this country or young adults that just don't have credit, we're even generous in approving those patients that have traditionally never been helped for. Uh, something that feels really good to me is, you know, if they take an obligation with iCreditWorks and they handle that well, they pay it back, well, they're actually building their credit score. That's going to help them in the future um, being able to borrow money whenever they need to. Uh, but that's one of the reasons that financing has been so uncomfortable in the past. It, it, it feels really bad to be the conduit, to be the, to be the voice, the, the person that has to collect the information, process it, and then physically have to tell yeah. the patient. It's actually, I'm sorry, it's actually easier. Blind. It's easier oh. just to help them segment their dental work and say, Hey, let's just do the filling yes. today. And Hey, let's just do the the crown next time. And Hey, we'll work on those other problems later. It's easier to do that. That's a very easy thing to explain and work with them managing their treatment rather than working and managing their credit and their finances and all those kind of things. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. And because that's been easier in the past, dental teams have really pulled back on when they offer financing. And we think this is another huge mistake. And we think it's caused by friction. And we also believe that the process that we created will help eliminate that friction and that barrier. So because it's been uncomfortable and painful in the past to discuss financing, people just avoided it completely. The reason this is such a big mistake is, you know, over half of your patients will not tell you that they need financing options to move forward. They will make up any other excuse to save themselves the embarrassment of saying, hey, I need to borrow money for this, or 
I don't know if I can be approved or not. What we believe is really important is to give the option to the patient and let them decide. So we think this belongs with every treatment plan that you present. And it might just go something as simple as this. Um, Gary, you know, the doctor recommended this treatment today. Uh, it's very important that you get, have this done for these health reasons. And the cost of it is going to be $4,000. Now, we're happy to accept cash. We can swipe a credit card. Or if you'd like to see what a monthly payment plan or payment option might look like, we work with this great company called iCreditWorks. It's the easiest thing in the world. All I have to do is send you a text. You click a link. And in less than a minute, you know how much you're pre-approved for and you can see options. By the way, there's no hit to your credit score if you want to look at it. What would you like to do? If, if it's that simple with each patient, you're not trying to convince them, you're not trying to sell them a loan, but you're giving them an option. And what we see is a rise in increase of people that say, you know, I do want to look at that. And maybe I can pay cash for this, but show me what it's like. Yeah. Uh, let me see what those monthly payments look like. Yeah. I you know, I have some, I've got three kids. I have some, I have some, I have some thoughts on that, but before, before I jump on yeah, those thoughts, me. I wanted to, what are, so, and, and I know we've talked about this before. I know a lot of offices right. have been promised things by financial folks in the industry where it's like, yeah, sign up for us, use this. And so right. there's, there's hesitancy on that side. What makes this time different with you guys? Like what's the, What's the thing that's like, hey, no, this is different. Um, like, how are you positioning on that? And then I want to come back to your other, the, the thing we were just talking about, because I got I got some good questions for you on that one. Okay, yeah, that's great. Because there, there's affordability, but there's also flexibility that we haven't always considered in this thing. So let's, let's definitely uh, write that down. We can come back to it. Um, you know, the... the the thing that we believe is, is fundamentally different is we are now presenting options and showing patients um, financing in a way that they want to see it. So if you think about an Amazon, um, think about an Amazon app, think about an American Airlines app and everything that's on your phone. We buy like crazy and schedule our lives through these mobile devices now. Yeah. And why do we do that? We do it because it's private and it's secure, but we also have these optimized processes within a native mobile app, which is different than any website. If you've ever tried to navigate a website on your phone. It's a disaster of an experience. In fact, I, I know you fly a ton. I use, I always fly American because their hub is in Dallas. I use that website to book my tickets and change my seats. And I love to change my seat to the exit row if I can the day before. But what I've noticed happens is an hour before the flight, or maybe it's two hours before a flight, I can't change my seat on the app anymore. So if I try, a dialog box pops up and it says, do you want to go to aa.com to change your seat? Yes or no. What do you think I click, Gary? I caught you mid drink, so my timing. So uh, you have to go to the web browser. So if you want to change your seat, you're going to hit so yes. yes or no. Yeah. So I don't. I hit no because I would rather stay sandwiched between <laughs> potentially two big dudes in a yeah. middle seat than redirect to a browser on my phone log in, I've got to find my password, I have to zoom in, zoom out, find the tiny seat, move around, and I just say, no, forget about it. I'm just going to, if I can't do it on this mobile, you know, optimized app, then I'm not going to do it anywhere else. Well, it's the same way with what we created. Um, the speed that they get a decision, the amount of people that we are approving, and not just approvals, but we're actually giving them in a meaningful amount so that they can afford their treatment. Mm. And that's probably worth considering too. You know, the, the industry's got a little bit of a bad reputation for advertising a super high approval rate, which can be a very good thing. However, if we approve someone for $80 and they need 4,000, it's technically an approval, but it really hasn't. So helped. they're so just so um, the same so page because this is going to be what ends up getting clipped yeah. and the thing that people are going to be the most interested in. So there's some deceptive. Right. Oh, imagine that, right? In the financial world, there's some deceptive uh, 
financial metrics when people are like, Hey, our approval rating is X. You have to ask right. more questions. Like, is that a hundred percent of the treatment that's needed? Or is that just you right. throwing out random numbers, giving somebody a dollar when they need a hundred? That's right. There can be a difference in marketing and in, in, in what's actuality in, in practice. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that on a marketing podcast. No, it's Sorry. no marketing. No, no I'll, I'll tell you this. No, the, the financial yeah. marketers have a worse reputation, than probably anybody else. Like everybody hates marketers because we park it right and you don't you don't ever know if you're getting the real thing or the sugar coated thing and but but again that's i mean that's what people are dealing with so how do, i'm a dentist how do i kind of protect myself from that sure so i want to teach two new terms that i've never heard on your podcast and and i've listened to every financial one that you've had on and um and, and in other spaces as well we hear about approval rates all the time there are two words that we do not hear very often and and we like to teach these to our customers so they are accommodation and they are conversion okay so approval means we approve the patient for a dollar we're willing to lend them money okay and i will say we are all on the same mission okay and trying to help people for patient patient care we just have different tolerances and processes and algorithms and financial backers that allow us to bring our own formula and our own approach to the table. And at the end of the day, what we want to do is we want to lend money to every patient that we feel like will pay us back. And, and that's like the simplest statement of, of our mission. We want to we want to help people afford their dental care to every patient that we are confident will pay us back. Okay. So approval, we'll approve you for a dollar plus. That's all an approval can mean. Accommodation is, are we approving the patient for what they actually need for treatment? Mm. So if you need $4,000 and we approve for, you know, a hundred, that's an approval, but we did not accommodate that request. Uh, so people track so that? So is, you guys in the industry track yeah. that? Okay. So how does that stack up? Yeah. Like, how do we stack up now that we have this new term and new, new way of uh, kind of measuring what is actual, uh, what, what is actual success? Sure. Now, uh, so I think the question to ask here is, okay, great. You have a high approval rate. Talk to me about accommodation. You know, how often do, do patients actually get approved for what we need? Um, and I will tell you, it is, uh, it is the right question to ask, but it's also complex um, because at the end of the day, you're wanting to lend money to patients that will pay you back. And so it's not just FICO that matters, okay? It's debt to income, it's available income, it's you know number of accounts out there, recent delinquencies, charge offs. There are all these data inputs that come in that are basically telling us, will this patient pay us back? Can they afford this obligation? And if they can't, if we feel like they can't, then probably the meanest thing in the world would be to extend them the money that's going to damage their credit even further or get them upside down in an obligation. And so it, it, it becomes very important in responsible lending. Are you examining the right things? And, and a lot of that's kind of our inside approach and, and our IP around you know, why we're able to do what we do. But accommodation is is an important term to to talk about and, and ask about. That is a gem. The other one is conversion. Okay, quick, no, go, go ahead. ahead. I, I was just going to say that's a gem. So let's let's quickly go yeah. through uh, what a conversion. Sure. Um, so conversion is, is the other thing. So conversion means did the patient get approved? Did they get accommodated? Did they get approved for enough? But did they actually like and understand what they saw, what was presented to them, was it clear and could they afford it? Uh, which causes them to say yes to that treatment plan. Um, so not just enough to be approved, not just enough to be accommodated, but do they see a payment they can afford? Is it a rate they're comfortable with? Can they say yes? And have you made it easy for them to say yes in this environment so that we can move forward with treatment? So one of the things that we're super proud of at, at iCreditWorks is you know, we approve up to about 80% of applicants that are in our range. Okay, that means 520 and up plus no score. Um, but of those approved, we actually have a 70% conversion rate, which means not only are patients getting approved, but they see something, they understand that they can afford 
and it's easy for them to transact upon with their device and they're able to move forward. And that's part of what our native, uh, native mobile app enables. Um, it is unique in the way that, you know, for one, the speed in which we can improve, it really happens within seconds. But then the way that we present loan options is very clear and transparent to the patient. They see the payment, they see the rate, okay? They choose their loan, they create a login, uh, and within just a matter of minutes, they can actually walk through the whole process and the dentist is able to start treatment that day and they're collecting funds that day through their app. By the way, back to the dental team friction, they've been able to see the status and the progression of the patient application in their Chrome cloud-based browser. Um, so that's real time. They're able to kind of see. And in the event that they send a link to a patient before they came into the office to get pre-approved, they'll actually know, did the patient do anything with that link? You know, were they approved before they even come in? And what a confidence booster that is when they're talking about treatment plans to know that, hey, they already have an approval kind of kind of in the in the back in waiting if they want to use it's it. It's huge. That is huge. If someone wants to learn more about what you guys are doing or if this is the right fit for their kind of practice, what what's the best way to get in contact with you? Yeah. So email is fantastic. Uh, it's chad.johnston at icreditworks.com. Be sure to get my T in there. My granddad always said the T separates the good guys from the horse thieves. <laughs> um, maybe scratch that since I'm in the financial Good world. Fun. But uh, yeah, chad.johnston at icreditworks.com. That's awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. This was really, really good. Very informative. I love when I learn new things and I definitely learned something new today. So thank you for helping me frame that up. You bet. Thanks for having me on, Gary.